So, welcome back to our tutorial number 12 here. Uh, this is Ralph Eckert for Billiard Network and today's tutorial is about reference lines. If you remember our whole tutorial program, it's always about those four main things you need in order to play excellent pool, right? You have to have potting abilities, you have to have uh, uh, positioning abilities and positioning abilities divided into direction and speed, right? Direction and speed. And then we have the topic about patterns. We didn't have too much about it yet. But um, now it's about direction again. It's about direction. And we had those direct directions. I don't know if this is... <laughs> very nice English, but anyhow, you know what I mean. If it's about the direct way after contacting the object ball, we made a nice layout over here. Where does the cue ball go naturally with 10 degrees, 20, 30 degrees? Where does it go uh, along the tangent line, the differentiation of it? How does uh, uh, follow stun or replacement works out on 10 degrees? on a straight line on 20 degrees, how does a draw shot works out and this is always the direct directions before they contact any ray, okay, or until they contact the ray. But when it's about using one or two or more rails, then we need the little bit help of reference lines. I discovered a few of them and, um, by myself and I guess it was me there who made them quite popular with uh, also some uh, videos uh, like 10 years ago or more. And it was in the early 2000s. And uh, this is, for example, one reference line. And I will tell you in this tutorial what's all about those reference lines. How they can help us and give us some guide where does the cue ball goes naturally. And if we know that, then we know also how we can influence this little path we know. And um, a reference line is not only to know it, okay, from there, we know also what's happened when we move it over there. And so we'll, we will cover this part of the table, where does the cue ball go? And we will cover other parts of the table with other reference lines. So we have like the three already pretty well known. After I made them popular, you can see them all over the place, which is nice. So uh, I will show you those three to, um, reference lines today. And in the next tutorial, uh, two new ones and some other ones, maybe, uh, before we continue in the program. And yeah, let's have a look at those reference lines. And the first shot starts with foot bot or uh, um, head spot. This is head spot. And the cue ball is with its outside part on this diamond. Okay? So this would be the starting point. Of course, you can put it anywhere from this starting point along the line towards the ghost ball to make it easier for you. Right? It's almost like a 45 degree shot. Uh, of course, it's also nice to practice it from here, but it's not about uh, pocketing skills. It's about where does the cue ball goes naturally. And yeah, let's have a look at this in the next scene. So if we have this situation, for example, of course, if you remember our program, we had also the 50 degree shot, which was the cue ball with its outside part over here. It's not much of a difference in the outcome but uh, has nothing to do with this 50 degree shot. Here we are approximately on 45 degrees. Outside edge of the cue ball is here. That's the starting point for this reference line. So you can practice it that way, the shot, why not? And, oh yeah, before I shoot it, I always ask when I have a group of uh, students or so, where does the cue ball go? And a lot of answers are, they say, oh, I might scratch over here. And they are right. If they miss this ball, for example, about there, the cue ball will scratch. <laughs> but if you make it in, then the cue ball will hit the rail about here between uh, this and that uh, diamond. So like half diamond away from the side pocket. 
And um, so it's safe, okay? There's no worry that the cue ball will scratch. Unless you are not frozen to the rail, you're anywhere here on the line and you play like a stop shot, then it will go along the tangent line as already known and then yes, it might scratch. But naturally, we are interested to know where does the cue ball goes naturally, from alone. From alone, <laughs> so to say, right? Because this is very powerful to know. And uh, I give you this situation, for example, where do you think? And then when I say, okay, it's going to hit the rail over there, but where does it end up over here? And then when I ask, some players say, oh, it's going to hit the rail over here. Some other one, oh no, it might scratch over there. Some other one put it here. So we have like a big black hole here where, where the people think maybe here, maybe there, but of course somewhere there. And this is not accurate enough in my opinion, right? And those reference lines help you to get this. I put it back straight on the rail because I cannot cheat so much over here giving a, a accident English or playing low or anything like that. I can play only high from here. So you can see really the natural outcome of that shot. See, it ends up here. And you see also, I cheat a pocket, not on purpose, um, over here. So that's where it ends up. You can imagine if I cheat a pocket on the other side, it might end up like this. So that's our range where the cue ball comes to this rail, near that middle diamond or around that middle diamond. So, and of course, the outcome is pretty much the same if you put it over there, right? Anywhere along the line to the ghost ball. See, I cheat again on this side and it's again the same spot. Let's make it complete and do it, maybe cheat the pocket a little bit more on the other side. Uh, it's a lot of treatment, but it's okay. And then still here in direction towards the diamond. On some other table brands, not so much about table brands, but uh, what kind of cushion do they have? Soft cushions, hard cushions, what band? Sometimes it's coming up here or there, um, but it will always be consistent, so you can always rely on it. But what is a reference? What kind of benefit can we get out of it? Because this is not always the shot we get. But the benefit from this direction or from this reference line is that we have a system for, that it gives us direction for anywhere here in this area. I will show you closer in the next scene. So, um, of course a real reference is not only from this position, but it gives you a reference also, okay, if you know where the cue ball goes from this position or anywhere on that line. You know also, aha, if it's a little bit more here, it's gonna get longer. If it's a little bit more there, it's gonna get shorter. So it gives you a reference. It's not a system where you can calculate it out. <laughs> it would be a very tough calculation, but it gives you a reference. So, and the reference also works, of course, if this is not on the spot, if it's a little bit more here, you can imagine it must come up shorter. If it's a little bit more there, it must come a little longer and of course closer to the scratch danger, right? But still save maybe a ball size uh, from, the, from the spot. But it's getting even more powerful if you or just calculate by yourself or estimate by yourself if you bring them down by one diamond from here to there, just by one diamond Okay, and this is still outside here. Where do you think does the cue ball go now? If it was here on that, towards that diamond, some players tell me, oh, must supposed to be one diamond 
shorter, right? But it's not. If you play that and try it by yourself, as you see, it still goes in direction to the diamond. Maybe a little bit longer, maybe a little bit shorter here and there. We still have this frame, depending how we cheat the pocket. Okay? So, because, and why is it? Because when you change that position, you change the angle with it. And that's why it's self-inflicted, and that's why we have a consistency outcome here. And this works even a little bit below the diamond, and can be anywhere here. And you can imagine if this is anywhere there. This is still very powerful. You see, now it shortens up a lot. So maybe just here, like a half diamond, no, like a ball size below that diamond. It's still accurate here. So from here, let's say, let's say from there to there, inside the diamond or a little bit outside also, it still works very consistent. If you pass that zone here and here, it changes dramatically. So it's kind of, it's kind of uh, consistent in this field and then it changes dramatically. You can also Imagine, so if anything, it's in between those diamonds, right? Cue ball here, maybe eight ball there. Um, hard to get the cue ball there, right? So why not shooting it over there? And then maybe your opponent has some balls left. Maybe one over there, another one over there, and maybe over there. And then you know, oh, huh. Okay, some players will choose that way, but uh, if you know the reference line, then you know I have to do nothing. I just have to catch the right speed because I know it's gonna go over here. And that's powerful. If you imagine all the trick shots I do sometimes on Instagram or that, they are very fancy and the people say, oh, that's fantastic shot, but they will come up maybe 30. They will come up maybe once in 30 years. These will come up almost every day. So they are way more powerful to know them. And especially if you think about it, it's not only those specific spots, it's anything here which is near in this area, you can judge better than before. And that's the key to reference lines. And we will give you enough reference lines that you will cover, uh, that it will help you to cover all your estimation of table outcome. Okay? Let's have a look at the next reference line in the next scene. So, uh, we shifted everything a little bit to get this perspective for the next, the next uh, reference line. And the starting point from the reference lines is actually the foot spot and the cue ball starts on the head spot. But of course, this is a shot which comes up not that often anymore. But as you imagine, a reference line is more powerful than just covering this situation. And so if you shoot that shot, for example, right, in the left or right corner, then you will see very difficult shot, right? So it takes years for me to cover or find out that uh, shot uh, before I make it easier on myself because, or it took years that I can master this ball, but you can make it easier, of course, to bring the cue ball, not from here, anywhere from here in direction to the ghost ball. Or if you shoot the other pocket, like this, right? So then you can make it, of course, easier for yourself and the outcome will be pretty much the same. And where do you think does the cue ball goes naturally from on that shot? That's the question. 
Of course, uh -huh, somewhere there on the rail, because if you remember this shot, um, okay, some players are afraid that the cue ball gonna scratch. No danger, unless you miss the ball over there to full. But if you just let it roll, it will certainly come between uh, pocket and this diamond. And uh, the harder you play, the closer it will be to the scratch part, to the pocket. But if you play just high and let it roll softly, and then it will uh, hit it again to thin. So, coming from here, and then And then it will come back to its starting point. Here's the starting point, a little bit short, which is normal, unless you have fresh recovered cloths. On a tournament basis, where you have mostly fresh recovered cloths, you can expect it to come back exactly where its starting point is. And uh, in the beginning, it was like a quality shot and it was shown to me by another top player from Germany, Christian Reimering, in the early 2000s, because he was using this shot to measure the shot quality, or better, the shot consistency of his students playing the shot and controlling the shot, getting the same outcome on the left and the right. Because you can imagine if someone has some right side spin accidentally in his stroke, he get a totally different outcome on the left and on the right. So you control your shot with it. But from that spot, I experienced a little bit more with it and I found out that you get this consistency not only from that spot, but almost anywhere on those lines. I will show you more examples uh, in the next scene. So, let's give you a few more examples. But um, when we go back to the starting point, yes, so you can uh, imagine it comes back over there, fresh recovered table, not fresh recovered, it's gonna come short if you play there, or if you play there, it's coming over there. And it doesn't matter, right? It can be also here, for example, right? Before I was shooting from there, let's move along over there. As long as the cue ball gets the second rail, you can imagine, aha, here is the second diamond. That's my reference spot. That's where it's supposed to come back, maybe a little shorter. When I shoot that, you see? That's the starting point. That's where it's coming towards to. A little bit shorter, like I said. But that's what you can count on when you have that ball here on that second diamond line. We started from the spot. And uh, let's stay one more from that spot. When it's over there, for example, and there's no second rail. The cue ball won't hit the second rail, so it's not in this reference system. But let's say when it's there. Cue ball is here, and you shoot that ball in the day. It's like an everyday shot, right? You have to deal with it a, long, a lot of times. Maybe next ball is over there, right? And, um, and maybe you have, so you know, uh -huh, cue ball is going to pass over here. So if there's a ball here or there, which you make, they make you worry if you don't want to run into them, right? But when you know the reference lines, then you know, oh, oh I have to do nothing, <laughs> right? It just goes naturally in between those balls, right? May I should have shoot a little harder, and I don't have to make a hand grip over it, but you see, it's going to work. And, um, and this works pretty much everywhere, anywhere on that diamond. Cue ball here, 
So you can expect it, uh huh, over here. Maybe, yeah, should be okay. You see? Still there. This time a little bit longer. You have to expect it, it's not a specific spot. It's always a zone, like this. Depending how you cheat the pocket, how hard you stroke, and maybe some accident English. A lot of players like to shoot those balls with a little running spin, running English. So a left pocket would be here with a little bit right spin. That's okay. You just have to know, okay, with running spin, you make the shot shorter. Okay? You have to deal with it depending on your situation where you want to get a cue ball. If the natural direction shows you a way towards the pocket, of course, you want to give some right side spin to make sure it's going to get shorter, right? So that's what makes this line very powerful. And you can imagine also if it's a little bit shorter, it won't change the whole thing. But it's, if it's a little bit behind that line, okay, then it's not here, then you can expect it a little longer. That's actually here, and now it's a little bit longer instead of shorter, right? Because it was behind that second diamond. It will be a little shorter when it's higher than this two second diamond, but the cue ball will come shorter or closer to the side, to the corner pocket. So you can imagine how powerful this is as long as the cue ball hits the second rail. And uh, yeah, I hope uh, you like it and give it a try before I show you the next. Um, reference line. So the next reference line is a 45 degree reference line. I know, especially in America, they go for more half balls, quarter balls, eightl. I don't know how to count and say that. But anyhow, we go more for like 10 degrees, 20, 30, whatever degree shot. And on a 45 degree shot, you have a nice consistency on other ones also, uh, if you follow our tutorials. <laughs> but the 45 degree reference is very powerful because on a table you can um, see 45 degree angles very easy because you just take the diagonal between those squares you can find anywhere on the table. Either way, this diamond square, uh, this diamond one or this diamond square, you can always take the diagonal and you see 45 degrees, so it's easy to identify. And the law is, if you are here, have a ball in the center, diagonal means that you come approximately from that diamond. Or if you put it not uh, exactly in the center, but the ghost ball in the center, and you come from this diamond exactly from the corner, right, from the out, so the outside edge of the cue ball is here, then you get a 45 degree shot. Of course, you don't have to start here, you can put it also over there on this diamond intersection. So that's why you have always intersections, always diagonals, always can identify easily 45 degrees. And if you cut that ball in the side pocket, then the question is, where does it hit exactly the ray? Hmm. And when I ask, then I always get uh, things uh, maybe over here, over there, there, anywhere here. Of course, depending also a little bit on your stroke, but there is a consistency, and this consistency is transferable into other situations. And this consistency is one diamond. You see, I hit it there. It's one diamond off from the tangent line. There's the tangent line, and it's one diamond off. A little bit more this time, because I cheat the pocket here on the right. It will be on the diamond if I hit it square, or a little bit before if I hit it more there. So, of course, you can also put it, some people like it better, exactly in the side, in the center of the table, and coming approximately from that diamond. That's also nearly... 45 degrees, and then you see it's again the same spot, and it was a little bit above here, a little bit more than one diamond, because I hit again pretty thin. 
I cheat a pocket on the right. So, but what can we do out of this? Because in our, our daily games, the ball is not always in the center. But of course, it's nice when it happens. And if you are not exactly in 45 degrees, you can imagine, that's why it is a reference, another system, you can imagine it's a little bit more, less than like 40 degrees, so you can imagine it will be a little bit more on this side. If it's a little bit lesser, the more thin it is, 50 or more degrees, naturally it comes closer to the tangent line. So you can, you can judge those balls in direction of the cue ball much better than before. And if you think about it, you have a ball over there, object ball with its outside edge on that diamond, and the cue ball is right in the center, then you got a perfect 45 degree shot, right? And then you know, uh -huh, tangent line is over here, it will drop by one diamond after a half table length. So, if you just let it roll naturally, Whoops! You see, it's gonna go across from the uh, uh, tangent line by one diamond. A little bit more or less, depending on your stroke and quality and how you cheat a pocket. But I will give you more examples in the next scene. So, and if we uh, put it somewhere else, for example, hmm, of course, can can work also a diamond higher, right? Then I'm not coming from here. I must come from uh, over here, right? That's the diamond intersection, so if this outside spot is over here, then I got uh, in al almost exactly 45 degree, and then it's the same thing, right? And, um, and when I mean natural roll, you see, one diamond is very powerful. If you have a situation like that, right? Then you have, let's say, eight ball, and you got your last ball maybe over here and uh, the eight ball over there and maybe your opponent has uh, some balls left here and you got approximately a 45 degree angle here. You see I put, a, not accidentally but on purpose I put it somewhere not certainly on a diamond it's almost a half diamond right so if the cue ball is a little bit behind this spot, then I'm also about a half diamond and it's also about 45 degrees and I don't care if it's 46 or 47 or 43 degrees, it won't change much. But what I know is that this is the tangent line and it's gonna drop here if I play natural like one diamond. So it's gonna come close here. Okay, it might be close to the eight and pretty close to the 10, but I'm gonna pass naturally and safely. I don't need to use side spin or anything like that, right? I could even make this a little bit more tight. So I can concentrate on the shot only to make it, let the cue ball roll naturally, softly, I'm gonna hit exactly there so I can even go very precise here, right? Without danger and it looks dangerous. But with the knowledge, you will feel comfortable. Okay, of course, you can shoot it also harder if the eight ball is over there, for example. Right? Then it doesn't matter if it comes out a little bit more. Same thing. So it gives you a lot of power, those reference lines. It gives you power to know where the cue ball goes naturally. And naturally means rolling. It rolls over the table. So if you if you, if you shoot it, uh, let's say, even low in the beginning, but in the moment it hits the ball, it rolls over the table. You get the same outcome. If you shoot high, real high, if you play it soft, it's natural to me. If you play it hard, with a lot of force follow. You need power, more power, right? And the, more, the harder you shoot, the longer stays the cue ball on the tangent line before the high takes any action. So you won't change it much. You will shorten it up because of the power, right? 
So a real high, a real force follow will have action where more on or the curve has more action on 10 or 20 degrees, not so much on 45 or thinner. Okay, you have to know that. And knowledge gives you um, self-confidence, um, self-competence, which is the key for self-confidence. Uh, and this, so you, some players won't have a mental problem when they are not sure sometimes, they're feeling not secure where the cue ball goes or so. It don't have to be always a mental problem. It can also be, has to do something with self-competence. So, anyhow, I'll give you one more example in the, ne in the next and final scene. And yeah, let's have a look and, at more examples. So, let's have a look at another situation or let's use another ball here. 45 degrees, you can also, if you want to check it, uh, put it the outside edge on the center of the diamond, right? And the cue ball comes from this diamond intersection, then you know at least that's your 45 degree rule, right? And so when you shoot that shot, you know, uh -huh, tangent line is over here. If with natural roll, the cue ball crosses by one diamond after half table length, then it's over here. Okay, that's what you can expect. And of course, if you play with that kind of speed, then it might reach the pocket. It will not naturally always go scratch, sometimes hits that rail, sometimes that. Depends a little bit. Think about, it's not a certain spot what you reach, it's a zone, depending on how accurate you shoot a shot and think about also about your shot consistency put up the same shot for example just for your practice a good routine put the same shot here and here outside edge on a diamond and the cue ball always here in the center and see if you get here with one diamond the same natural outcome like shooting it to the right side, because if you have some, some side spin on it, right side spin, which you are even not aware of it, you can see, for example, right side spin would make this outcome very short, and the same right side spin would make this outcome very long. So you can check your shot consistency with it also, and you should. <laughs> but let's go also back to this situation here. So let's check that out. If this really passes this line here by one diamond, you see a little bit more, depending probably I hit a little bit too high and a little bit too much speed, maybe it, well, this was the reason. Anyhow, you can um, also depend on it. For example, if we create an example, let's say, um, let's say put the eight ball over here, maybe. Your opponent has a ball left here, another ball left there. You got your last ball over here, then we just made a situation out of it, right? Did we? And we can do the same thing, uh huh. Of course, something there, something there, create a little extra traffic. <laughs> So it looks, it looks uh, 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 ooh, <laughs> frightening, but you know, ah, here, here, so it's there. And even if, if, this is spa, if this is blocked the natural way, you know you just have to give a touch of left side to pass here, right? So the reference line not only gives you the knowledge where the cue ball goes naturally, you know also when you have to give side spin and how much. Remember also the system or the references we had on one, two, three tip sizes of side spin, right? So this is just a natural outcome here. Right? Hitting there, passing there, and get a position on the eight without being afraid of hitting one of those balls, right? Um, I wouldn't risk it if it's a little bit thinner, right, the gap, 
but sometimes you have to. So I hope you like that tutorial. Gives you yeah some ideas, some um, references for your game. Very powerful. Don't miss the next tutorial. I give you some not so well known um, reference lines, and those reference lines will cover together with those give you a very nice navigation for all over the table for all games. Nine ball, eight ball, straight pool, uh, ten ball, whatever you like most. So this is Ralph Recker for Billiard Network. Don't hesitate to contact me by email office at ralphrecker.com. If you want to order a book, those structure book, accordance to this program, right? Or maybe... Uh, the Final Freedom, or also The Player from Singapore, a novel which comes out in a few weeks in English also. Or follow me on Instagram, you're going to find me easily, or Facebook, see some other more ridiculous shots with the little wow effect. Thank you very much. This was Ralph Eckert for Billiard Network. <laughs>